Rich right. Nantes. We can mm -hmm. bring it home. Then we're going international, as I said earlier, again with Prada, but uh, focusing on Richemont, which is a Swiss-based luxury goods company controlled by the Rupert family. Correct. So it's headquartered in Switzerland, but of course it has South African roots because the Rupert family used the cigarette revenues from the Rembrandt business to go globally, get into Cartier, and then build basically a luxury goods business. 2008, they split it all apart. So what are listed here in South Africa is like a global depository receipt which trades at one tenth of the value of one share in Switzerland. Doesn't matter. But the it is a widely is held so stock in South Africa. Because if you owned the old Rem Grows and you or Rem Beherent or whatever it was called, then you got the Richemonts as you went along. Market mm. cap is 499.5 billion Rand. It's got a PE of 19.7, dividend yield here of 2.9%. Do you mm. own this one in client portfolios? I do, in fact, own this one, yes. <laughs> Your thoughts on Richmond as an investment, you're obviously positive f on the stock if your clients, you um, hold it for your clients. Yes, but it's a recent addition because at some stage we did get rid of it because the decline in global watch sales was a big problem actually. And you've seen kind of if you look at the chart that the share has come down. It is a darling of the South African market though. Mm. South African investors just love the stock. It feels mm. one of those uh, blue chips that you kind of put in your bottom drawer and look at 10, and 15 it just years going, down the line. Right? Mm. Yeah. Look, the reason it is is firstly people had them all along and secondly it's big and thirdly there's nothing else like it. You know, if you look at the rest of the retail market for South African investors, there was it's nothing that'll give you that high end consumer across the board. people who sell gem squashes and brooms. This is a company that is global, so it's a fantastic grand hedge. The problem is, as Anthea has alluded to, in recent years it's had some worrying trends in its business. Firstly, it's big in Asia, it was very big in Hong Kong and really put a big surge into there and secondly watches because the smart watch trend that's the apple watches we referred to earlier has put a bit of a kibosh in global on the sales. likes of the cartiers not so much people who obviously like the idea of a cartier watch so that's fine the jewelry end of the business is fine but at the bottom end of the ranges there's been pressure and also in Western countries, if I can use that term, there's a trend away from the complicated mechanical watches. The Chinese still love those. So there's been a bit of a mix, and we know that Swiss watch sales have been rather pup lately. But then mm. you use this as an entry point because you are obviously assuming that we will see a recovery in sales across the board, including watches. Certainly, and also Richemont has a fairly high revenue generation in their jewelry business, which has a high margin. Mm. And so that should keep the stock fairly resilient, even though watch sales perhaps have been down or a bit sluggish. Remind me, Paul, we have owned this one. Do we, we still do. own it? We, we do, own we it do. Right we now. don't have a significantly enormous position, so that's also... But the decision we've got to make is whether we upscale our position yes. as we have done yes. with a number yes. of the stocks that we are, have higher conviction on. Look, they are very, very brand uh, aware and brand conscious. They're constantly reviewing the designs. Uh, Cartier and Von Cleef and Arpels are tremendously powerful and high margin businesses. And the emphasis there is really on the upper end of the market. You know, the Von Cleef and Ampel's jewelry uh, is incredibly expensive. Hundred thousand dollars. You know a lot about Von Cleef uh, and Ampel's. you know, Ampels. go and explore is your wife in the, the lucky one on no, the no. receiving end here? No, I mean my wife does wear a Cartier, but not a terribly expensive one. You know, like a tank. You know, one of those ones that Henry Cartier designed for. Yeah, similar to similar that to one. This one. <laughs> World class. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those hand watches were designed by Henry Cartier, the founder, for Santos Dumont because he was the guy who invented air travel and he thought he needed a wristwatch as opposed to the old fob watches they had before. This we've is got, like we've 1915. Got to call this one. Do we? We've got to call this one. Is there <laughs> anything else that you'd like to add? Because we're going to make a decision at the end of the show as to whether to up our stake in Richmond on that conviction level. Sure. So they, Richmond also sit on a fairly big cash pile, mm. a little bit like Apple, you know, what, over 5 billion euros mm. in cash. So opportunistically, they won't, I, I don't think they'll just go out and buy unnecessarily, but if the opportunity is mm. there. You're right, they've bought some great family owned watch brands and jewelry brands along the way. And this is probably the right time to do it, given the relatively de depressed environment in Europe and in the United Kingdom. I think there might be a caveat. I think there might be some volatility. You know, these watch sales 
globally, just it hasn't stabilized quite yet. So if you are going to buy it, I think maybe be prepared for some volatility. Or some downside as well, you're saying. So it could potentially go further down before it goes higher. Sure, but how do you pick the bottom? Exactly. Never try and catch a falling knife, but this is not a falling knife. This is <laughs> something that's going to have a rising tide. Let's hope. Key. That Hong Kong is very important, and Hong Kong's had some tough years also with social protests. And then there's also the issue of whether there'll be a repeat of the kind of terrorist attacks that have deferred tourism. You know, s France is still the world's most popular tourist destination. And if they have repeat attacks by ISIS uh, operatives, then that's going to be very negative. But I hope, you know, one can only be hopeful that that is in the past and that this is all priced in. So at the current level, around 85 rand a share looks very attractive to me. Hot or not? It's definitely a hot. All hot or not? Yep, let's go for it.